Hey YouTubers, it's uh, Brian Big Boy 1000 back at you again with another video here. Um, it's kind of like an unboxing video, but not because um, I've already unboxed it. As you can see, it's sitting there on the table. But I uh, figured I'd show you what I got and tell you why I got it and what I'm going to do to it. Um, start out with this is a, a Mossberg 12 gauge 590 A1, and it's uh, the 18 and a half inch version has the ghost ring sights on it. It's a 5 plus 1 and uh, I opted this gun because it's a uh, mil spec and which really doesn't mean a whole lot when it comes to the shotgun but it is mil spec meaning that the trigger assembly is uh, aluminum or metal and the safety on top is metal. It's got a parkerized finish and the barrel is a little heavier. Other than that it's basically kind of like a 500 other than this gun is the only one to pass the military mil spec uh, failure test um, but I've always liked Mossberg, I had a Mossberg 500 and if you've been following me and watching my videos um, you'll know that I had a Mossberg 500 that I kind of converted to tactical and you know the reason why I started that is I got on YouTube looking for a flashlight mount for my 500 and I seen this cool black aces tactical rail I was like wow I'm gonna buy it so I bought it, flashlight, flashlight mount end up getting the ATI collapsible stock, two shot shell holders, and the gun really looked sick, real tactical, but let me tell you, it wasn't very tactical at all. That thing weighed more than my AR-15, it was very heavy and cumbersome with all that weight on there, and it was just kind of hard to maneuver it and just hold it up for a long period of time. So I decided I would start selling the accessories off of the gun, you know, to kind of lighten it up and go a different route with the gun. But got bored one weekend and put it up for sale, and uh, lo and behold I ended up selling the whole gun the way I had it a little bit less than what I had in it but I sold it and uh, I opted to take that money and turn around and buy me another Mossberg uh, 12 gauge but this time I did a little bit more research on the guns and what they offer and I wanted to get a pump um, semi-automatics are kinda cool but they do have tendency to jam picky with ammo and a pump is kinda like a revolver you rack it chamber it it's gonna fire so uh, I wanted a pump shotgun and when I was looking of course I wanted a Mossberg you know uh, Remington would have kind of been okay but I've always liked the Mossberg so I just kind of looked to see what else they had to offer come up with this decided I was going to buy this and I'm going to keep it real simple try to keep it lightweight and not get too stupid with the gun just hanging stuff off it everywhere because that was if you check out my videos it looked pretty bad but and a lot of people run their gun like that, but I just wasn't happy with it. It just wasn't light enough. So let's get started here, and I'll kind of show you. Like I said, this is the uh, military one. It's the M. I don't know if you can kind of see it there. But it's the M590A1 military spec. Got the ghost ring sights on it, like I was saying. Let's show you the front. Yeah. And, uh, so I picked this up off Davidson's. Um, website after tax and fees, shipping and all the blah 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 hoopra. Um, I was out the door for 565, and that was within the ballpark because I've seen these guns ranging between 499 and say 599, depending on where you find them. And that's not including you know shipping or background or any of that kind of stuff or tax. So all said and done, it was 565. Picked it up, and uh thought it was gonna you know I looked at it real good when I, I picked it up and paid for it and signed for it to take it home I thought I gave it a good once over um, but when I got home I, I kinda noticed something I'll show it to you and uh, the reason why I brought this up is because as you can see this cleaning supplies back there today was like a, a range day kinda went out this morning and shot a few guns and I took all my guns this is the only one I didn't shoot and I'll tell you the reason why I didn't shoot it it's why I'm gonna show you this when I got it home and got to looking at it I don't know if you can see it here well, let's see, probably not, but very lightly, like right around that area, you can kind of see. And it looked like the barrel had been dropped, and it had a little nick in the tip of the barrel, and being it was so close to the edge, it kind of left like a little spur hanging on the inside of the barrel. When you put your finger in there, it wasn't smooth, you could touch it. So uh, I called Davidson's up and told them about it, and they told me no big deal, lifetime warranty. Um, take it back up to the gun shop where I picked it up at, uh, mail it back, and, you know, they'll send me another one. 
So I was like, cool. So I went up there, and then they were telling me I had to pay shipping to get it there. I was like, man, you know, so now I'm going to be into the gun a little bit more money because now I have to ship it to get a replacement. And I kind of didn't think that was fair. And I figured, you know, for what I did, with the, I took a round file. All I did is I took a real fine round file, and I kind of went in there lightly and just touched it a couple times just to get that little spur out. But like I said, as you can see, it left a little bit of a, a mark there. Trust me, it's smooth when you touch it, but you can kind of see like a little, little mark there on the tip of the barrel. And i uh, just not too happy about that. And I didn't want to pay more money to send it back and then uh, have a replacement sent. So I called Mossberg up, not to complain, and even tell him about my issue. I just called him up and asked him how much a replacement barrel was for this model gun. And I got the price and was actually surprised at, at the price, like, wow, that's not too bad. So I decided what I was going to do is I was going to try to sell this barrel as a new blemished barrel, you know, and take that money that I get from selling this barrel and just uh, buy me a replacement barrel because I had good luck last time. I put a, a barrel up for auction, started at 100 bucks, and that's all I wanted for the barrel, and I ended up getting 182 50 for it. So this time the barrel is going to cost me $125 replacement. So I put it up for auction starting it at $125 and uh, see if I can't sell it and take that money and buy me another barrel. If not, if it bugs me that much, I might go ahead and pay the shipping and send it back to Davison's. But like I said, it's kind of my part. It didn't get dropped in the box because the box was in perfect condition. So this had to be dropped at the factory. But... Like I said, it's just a little aggravating. You know, when you work hard and you pay money for something new, you don't expect a scratch on it, but camera actually makes it look a little bit bigger than it is, a little because it's out of focus, but like I said, just a little nick right in the barrel. When you hold it this way, let me bring the gun up here. When you hold it this way, you don't, you don't see it, you know. But that's the reason why I didn't fire the gun today, just to put some rounds through it, because I'm trying to sell the barrel, and I don't want to, I'll get more money out of a new barrel than I will a, a used barrel. But on this gun, how I plan to set it up is, I've been looking at the Magpul stuff, because I had a, a Hogue Tamer set on my last one to start with. It was a pistol grip in the forehand, and the pistol grip just, that's fine if you just want to shoot from the hip and, and pray and spray and hope you hit something, but... I wanted to utilize the shotgun with slugs a little bit better and be able to shoot a little bit more long distance, you know, out to 100 yards. And trust me, yes, you can shoot slugs with a shotgun 100 yards and be pretty accurate with it. And even a little bit farther than that, I've seen it done. So uh, that's what I decided to do is I'm going to put the Magpul uh, SGA buttstock on it. Then I'm going to put their uh, Magpul Mo SGA um, forend on it. And that way I can still, you know, shoot from the shoulder. It'll have slots if I want to put a piece of Picatinny rail to put a little flashlight on there, which I kind of plan on putting either another Streamlight ProTac up there, or I'm going to get me one of these new Enforce WML lights that's kind of compact and mount on there. And I might put a side saddle on here, but I haven't made my mind up of that or not. But I do want to buy an S&J magazine extension for the front of it and give me two extra rounds. Uh, so I do plan on doing that, but other than that, guys, that's kind of the what I just picked up. Like I said, I had to sell some my other 500 to get it, but I don't really need two shotguns. But it'd be nice to hold up, get a Mossberg 930 just to have a semi-auto. That's what I would get, but just give you a look at it. You know, it's a real nice gun. Just too bad it's been, uh, like I said, looked like it had been dropped on the tip of the barrel a little bit, and it's got like a little nick in it that I had to fix, but. Don't you worry about that. I'll either send it back because my OCD gets the best of me. I'll either send it back and uh, just have them replace it because it is a lifetime warranty when you order off of Davison. So it's, you know, I'm not worried about that. Even if the gun manufacturer itself doesn't give you a lifetime warranty, you buy it from Davison, you get one. So that's the reason why I like to buy a lot from them. So I can send it back and give me another one. Or worst case scenario, I sell that barrel, pay a little bit difference if I have to, and just buy me another barrel. But... It'll shoot perfectly fine with that. Like I said, it was just a tiny little spur, and I filed it down. It didn't take five or six small little swipes, and it was gone. So, But just the fact that it's there kind of bugs me. Um, leave any comments below. Subscribe, like, share. Um, 
probably get off here and make a, another little video here, kind of probably talk about this little AR-15 kit. I kind of picked up a Kmart, man, of all places, just passing by after shooting some guns and knew that I didn't have an AR-15 chamber brush and I needed some more solvent. And last time I was at Walmart yesterday, they were out of solvent. They had like a gun cleaning kit for an AR-15 for like 40 bucks, and I wasn't about to pay that because all I needed was a chamber brush and some solvent. So on the way home, I stopped at Kmart, picked that up for like 20 bucks. But uh, other than that, guys, until uh, next time, I'm out.